Skin Health Canada, uh, which we present Enviro here in Canada, decided to conduct what they call the Ingredients Challenge with the doctor who came to the booth. And actually, the, uh, this challenge was a visual test. There were four uh, unidentified products and they had the list of uh, the active ingredients that were in the products. And doctors were asked to choose the best anti-aging uh, uh, skincare based solely on the list that was available to them. And uh, maybe not strangely enough, but 100% of doctors uh, choose uh, Environ uh, AVST5 as the product containing the most active anti-aging ingredients. So I think that's a very good introduction uh, for, uh, to illustrate the quality of uh, the Environ uh, skincare. So why do you think, my first question to you, why do you think that um, ingredients are so important when choosing an anti-aging skincare product? Well, basically, I believe that if you haven't got vitamin A and antioxidants, in your product, you're not talking about anti-aging at all. So many people make the mistake of thinking that if they have a glycolic acid or something like that, that that is anti-aging. Mm -hmm. But the truth of the matter is that you have to have vitamin A and you have to have it in effective doses. Dosage. Yeah. What about the, uh, the, uh, the delivery? Uh, system is it as important as the active ingredient? Someone could uh, argue that maybe other other line of products are have the same kind of active ingredients. Why environment is better or uh, one of the most active in the in the market? Well, we've got 20 years experience of trying to make creams penetrate very well. So there's a very important lesson to be learned about how to formulate a cream so that it penetrates better than another. We know that there's research work showing if you use certain bases for your creams, you don't get as good a penetration as when you use another mm -hmm. uh, base. And we've specifically targeted to make products that uh, penetrate into the skin as well as it can. We could definitely say that uh, nowadays, you know, the, the patients are more savvy in uh, choosing skincare. They have, there's more information out there, so people tend to choose more carefully the product. So in this quest for the, uh, like the holy grail of uh, anti-aging, uh, what do you think really causes aging? What are the main factors in, uh, in, uh, in the aging? Factor, the aging? I believe that people are looking for the latest little rave on the internet mm -hmm. or in the magazines. They are generally uninformed. Yeah, there's more information, but they don't know there's what to more, do with that. There's more okay. information, but it's not, it's not always accurate information. And mm -hmm. that is where I think we suffer a great deal uh, from the internet. When I look at aging, we have to recognize that free radicals, are probably one of the greatest causes of aging. Mm -hmm. So we have to do something about that. Another thing that we have to do is to make sure that the telomeres of our chromosomes stay nice and long. And the way to do that is to use vitamin A and to use antioxidants. Both of them have been shown in research work to prolong the length of the telomere. telomere. Those are the two main competing theories about aging. We can do something about that uh, with vitamin A and antioxidants. At what age do you think we should encourage our patient to, to, to start anti-aging uh, uh, creams, for example? Well, okay. I believe in the anti-aging for kids. For kids, absolutely. Yes, yes. Tell us about that. because I believe that, that we should really start treating photo damage when it very first happens. If you really want to slow it down, you must start then. Generally, most people think, oh, well, maybe about when you're 18, but I think you're about 14 years too late. Too late. So I think you should have started around about the age of four, when people are getting serious exposure to the sunlight, mm -hmm. we know that generally by the age of 18, something like 75% of the photo damage has already been done. Mm -hmm. In the quest for the, the, you know, the perfect uh, uh, skin care, you mentioned vitamin A, you mentioned a little bit vitamin C, antioxidant. What other products should be part of a good uh, anti-aging skincare regimen? Well, I think... Uh, 
since we're trying to build up the amount of collagen, we should use peptides. Peptides. You see. And we shouldn't fall uh, prey to the common misconception that there is one antioxidant that is all powerful. Mm -hmm. There is no superior antioxidants. We know that there's certain basic antioxidants that we have in our skin and vitamin C, vitamin E, these are important basics, uh, alpha lipoic acid, uh, coenzyme Q10 and then the one that we can't use which is glutathione mm -hmm. which only gets manufactured in the skin. But what we need is the broadest spectrum of antioxidants that we can manage for both the lipid phase and the water phase. Mm -hmm. The people who promote just one, say, pomegranate, which was quite popular, mm -hmm. uh, you know, that only does one little bit. Mm -hmm. We need to cover all aspects of uh, free radical damage. So that's why I th am very adamant that uh, people should not rely on just one antioxidant but have a spectrum of uh, antioxidants. Okay, so definitely vitamin A, a spectrum of antioxidant yes. and polypeptide. That should be mm. the core, uh, the, the core uh, products that should be in a good uh, uh, skincare regimen. Most of your lines in the uh, environment uh, uh, product, uh, there it's, a, it's, a, it's a, um, a step up program. So why is it important to follow the steps, let's say for the line AVST, for example. Yes, well, the, here we've got to understand the metabolism of vitamin A. Uh, the vitamin A can get into the cell through little receptors and then can get into the nucleus where it works through these receptors. Unfortunately, the receptors are damaged by sunlight. And progressively, as we get older, we've got l lots of accumulated loss of uh, receptors. So uh, when we are about 20, we probably have about 10, 10 to 15% of the receptors that we had when we were young. What we have to do is to stimulate the formation of those receptors so that we can take in the vitamin A. Now the paradox is that Vitamin A is the stimulus to make receptors. Okay. So you have to introduce the vitamin A slowly so that the body doesn't feel that, oh, I've got too much vitamin A trying to get into the cells. That's a retinoic uh, reaction. <clears throat> that's, exactly. that's the reason why we get these retinoid reactions. Okay. So that's why I devised this step-up system so that we gradually introduce the vitamin A. And I'm quite strict with some people. I even tell them, you may not use this cream every day. You may only start with it once every second day mm -hmm. and then gradually introduce it. And after a while, they take the vitamin A. And it's not that we're building them up to artificial levels. We're just trying to get them back to the optimal levels that their skin cells uh, would prefer to have. This is why maybe a, a patient don't see immediate, uh, let's say we start someone on AVST 1 or 2, they mm. don't see immediate act, a reaction because they're building up their receptor yes. before really having an anti-aging effect. That's we need right. to build up those receptors. Okay. Yes. Mm. Excellent. Uh, you mentioned the biopeptides. It's, uh, I know these products are uh, everywhere you find them. I know these are, they've been around for a few years. Now there's more and more biopeptides available and I think they're uh, very good products and all the major uh, cosmetic uh, companies have been using peptides, but with maybe very low quantities. But what are the, the most important biopeptides and what are the action of these uh, peptides? Well, I think <clears throat> that the peptide that has sort of set the gold standard is a peptide made in France. Here in America you have two forms of matrixyl. You have the one registered for America, which is plain matrixyl, and matrixyl has been largely supplanted by the new matrixyl 3000. The matrixyl, the old matrixyl had one peptide, whereas the new matrixyl has two peptides. I think that the research work done, uh, initially they, they showed very clearly that you could get the same result by using matrixyl 
as you could by using retinoic acid, 0 0.25 uh, milligrams per cent. This is quite, uh, quite a strong uh, boost to the formation of uh, collagen. collagen. For someone who's been using only uh, skin care, what kind of uh, a result could you expect? Just only uh, skin care. And in, what's the time frame? Uh, how long mm. would it take to see results? You know, this is where, like I'm puzzled by some of my patients. They come along after two weeks and they say, my husband says I'm looking better already. I look at them and I think, well, he's very observant <laughs> because I, I don't you know. Don't see <laughs> the only one thing for certain is that if it works within a few hours or days, then all it's doing is swelling up the skin. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. So uh, we've got to be very cautious about that. In general, I think that we uh, see changes by about three months, and then they become more established by uh, six months. By 18 months, we've achieved a result. Uh, to summarize a little bit this uh, quest for, for, for perfect skin, definitely very important to get the right ingredients in the right amount in the in the good a good vehicle in order to penetrate the skin. So basically, vitamin A, vitamin C, or a C or uh, some antioxidant put together, and uh, a good biopeptide. So yes. this is the formula for success. Yes. Okay, excellent.